Hello and welcome Northwest Air Guns. What we have here today is a Crossman 1377 pistol. A Crossman must have sold a ton of these over the years and I'd imagine that just about every kid that's had a pellet gun has had one of these and us uh, older kids too. Uh, they're still available new for what around 65, 70 bucks, something like that. And there's so many of these out there that a lot of times you can find them at yard sales or flea markets or the like and they're usually just a couple of bucks. And they're real easy to work on, they're easy to customize, easy to modify. So if you do get one cheap and then totally mess it up, uh, you're still only out a few dollars. Uh, this particular one I got from a guy that buys uh, contents of mini storage units, kind of like Tun Jones of uh, Auction Hunters, and it didn't pump up. so. I paid him $10 for it, figuring that I'd have to spend maybe another 25 or so to, to get it sealed up and operating. So it's still not too bad of a deal. This particular gun belonged to uh, H. Boyd, uh, who engraved uh, his name or her name right there on the, on the uh, side of it. And what I did is I, it was in kind of bad shape when I got it. so. Uh, I took it up to the gunsmithing school up in Lassen College in Northern California uh, a few summers ago and, and re-blued all the steel parts. So it looks pretty good now. There's a little bit of roughness right here, but otherwise it's, uh, it looks pretty nice. But it still doesn't pump up. So what I'm going to do is tear it down, put a new pump cup in it, and put some new seals in the valve so that it works again. And while I'm at it, I'll put a new steel breech in here to replace this plastic breech and it'll have a bolt with a handle on it. And before I tear into it, I, I want to mention that there are many, many variations of these pistols and it would be hard to cover them all. You just have to figure which version you have. Uh, but the good thing is that most of the consumable parts that pump cups and seals and whatnot, they'll fit just about any version you've got. So you should be covered if all you're trying to do is get it uh, pumping and holding air again. The one variation I did want to mention uh, relates to the caulking mechanism. And uh, in this one, you caulk the gun here separately from operating the bolt here. And if you look at this, you can see that really all this bolt does is uh, hold the pellet in here so that you can push it into the barrel and then when you lock it down it keeps the air from blowing out the back. You caulk it here using uh, this part of the gun. That's what sets the trigger. And this one here is a, a backpacker that we just converted. It's a, a friend of mine has this. So I helped him switch it over from a 1377 to a, the backpacker style. And on this one, it has a caulking lug that sticks up out of this tube. There's a slot in the top of the tube. And so uh, when you caulk it, you bring the bolt up. The bolt actually uh, pulls the lug back and sets the trigger. And then you can put your pellet in and, and uh, fire it. So that's a two basic types of mechanisms here. Uh, and there is some differences in how you take them apart and put them together and uh, maybe some of the parts as well. But uh, the basic ones, like the seals and pump cups, are going to be the same no matter um, which version you have. Okay, well, I have my parts trap right here. So let's go ahead and tear it apart. Now, I don't know if it makes much difference if you start at the top or the bottom, but I usually start at the top and take off the breech and the barrel first. And to do that, you have to take off this rear sight screw, and then there's another screw that's hidden uh, under here that holds this to the, the breech to the tube as well. So the first screw that we want to get off is this one here. It's uh, under the, uh, or goes through the sight in the rear. Get that one out of here. And the rear sight just lifts out and you can leave it intact like that. This 
in plug VIN. Come out, come on, come on. There it is. And we can take the uh, cover off of the bolt here. Take this uh, screw off. And then this uh, sleeve, or the cover for the bolt. and just come right out the back, like so. And then the bolt, the bolt comes out the back as well. And this one needs a little persuasion. But there's the bolt. So we got all that stuff out of here. The screw in this uh, channel, maybe you can see it there, there it is, and this particular one is, uh, is uh, a slotted screw, it's actually a Phillips head, but it also has a slot in it, some of them are Allen head, and so that has to come out, that goes down and holds the breech to the tube here. It is. You'd have thought it was a six inch long screw, but it's not. It's just a little bitty short fella. And then we're able to simply lift off the breech and pull it back, like so. The barrel and the breech assembly comes off. There's a couple other things that you want to note about this. This one has this uh, piece of metal that it fits here, and, and I guess what it does is keeps the uh, bolt from rubbing on the surface of it, of the tube. Uh, so it just kind of fits in there and it stays put once uh, the gun's all together. And then the barrel comes out of the breech. This is the plastic breech. So the reason people don't like these plastic breeches much is because they can flex. I don't know if you can see that. They can twist. So um, they don't give much rigidity uh, to the gun. So we're going to replace this with a steel one. Okay, well one thing that um, I forgot to mention, uh, when we pulled this apart, this little piece here fell out. And this is the uh, sleeve that goes into the transfer port. And so you want to make sure you're keep track of that and don't want to lose it. Uh, I mean, a lot of people will uh, replace this with a piece of plastic tubing or something, but uh, we're going original parts here to start with. So the other part of it is there's usually a little um, synthetic gasket in here, seal, that helps to, uh, it helps to seal that to, as the air comes out of the valve up into the barrel so that you get the, uh, you're not blowing air out the sides. And so this transfer port comes up out of there and fits into the barrel like so. So that's how that goes together. So if you take it apart, just be aware of that and keep track of these little parts here. Uh, the lower unit has two parts. It's got the, uh, tube part here and it's got the grip frame. So what we're going to do is uh, take off the grip frame first and we do that by pulling two uh, screws out of it. One screw is here in the front on very tight. And this screw also um, goes into the valve body 
inside the tube here and kind of holds it in place. The second screw we're going to take out is down here under the, uh, you can kind of see it there. This screw here goes into the hammer assembly. We'll take that out as well. Okay, so here's the hammer assembly. That's what it looks like. And uh, if you have the other style with the uh, lug coming up through uh, and caught by the bolt, it'll be different than this. But uh, this is how this one looks here. Now the other thing to notice here is um, there is a little spring here. Let's see. It's related to the um, safety. So there's a little spring right here. And uh, what you want to do is just be careful when you're taking it apart. Go ahead and take that spring out and uh, set it aside so you don't lose it. It's a little bitty fella, easy to lose. And underneath that, it's a little small ball bearing. It's like a 16th inch or 32nd inch, something like that. So just be aware that they're related to the safety and uh, don't lose them. Okay, we'll set those aside. To get at the trigger and the sear, you can pull these screws here off. the grips. And we'll take them both off. Once you get the covers off, there's two screws, one here and one here that hold this plate on here. They basically hold all the uh, trigger parts in place. the plate and here's your trigger mechanism here. If you look at it like that, if you pull the trigger that moves the sear up and down on this pin here. And now for the tube, uh, what's left is the pump assembly. If you can see all of this part here and the pump cups inside the tube still. And then we have the uh, the valve is still down here. If you can see the, the brass here, that what we're going to do is push the valve up through the front after we get the front end off. So to take the front end off, we're going to lay it like so. Get our pin punch. And we'll punch out this pin here. the roll pin. We'll set that aside. This front end now will come out like so. This is the uh, holds the barrel to the tube. Set that aside and now the pump assembly comes out through the front. Just like that. There's a pin here, which uh, you can probably just push it out. It's usually pretty loose. Set that pin aside. And this is the cup itself, the pump cup, that we're going to be um, replacing this rubber or synthetic seal here on the end. And take the tube. And I usually get a wooden dowel and just push it out. You can see it coming. There it is in the slot. Just keep coming with the dowel. And there's the valve. It comes out like so. This one 
usually has a, a seal here, an O-ring in this groove, but uh, I've already taken it off, so it's not, not there on this one. To get the valve apart, because uh, sometimes they're kind of tight, I put it into the vise here with the soft jaws. And what you can do is a couple of things. You can uh, take the screw from the grip frame and put it back in and then get something to kind of put some torque on it. Uh, and this one I've already loosened up, so it's, it's, it comes apart pretty easy here. So what we end up with uh, when we get it all apart looks something like this. Um, when you pump the air, or pump a couple over here, in the tube, you're pushing air, and it goes in a little hole right there in the end of the, uh, the valve. And when you stop pumping, here's the check valve, and it seats down in there, and it keeps the air from coming back out that same little hole. It's got this spring on it and the uh, pressure from the compression inside the valve here. Uh, the other end of it here is the valve stem, the seat of the valve here, and it, it, it seats in there like that. So the air can't get out this end either. The only place the air can go is when this gets popped off the, of its seat uh, then the air can flow around that and up through this transfer port into the barrel. And looking at the system here, you've got several places where uh, performance can be affected uh, so that it, it doesn't work properly. And first is the pump cup. If it doesn't seal well in the tube, uh, then it doesn't push air into the valve very well. And if there's a lot of space, what they call head space, where this doesn't close down over like that, but let's say it closes and, and you only get that close. Well, you've got this dead space in between here that you're pumping but not getting any benefit of it. So you want the pump cup to be um, like that. And some guys uh, will actually uh, buy an aftermarket uh, piston. It's what they call a flat top piston. It has an O-ring instead of this kind of a, a pump cup. and then this will be flattened off on this side so you have a flat piece coming up against a flat piece and uh, it's pretty efficient a lot of people do that second place that you can have trouble with these guns is here with the uh, check valve and the check valve essentially just seats up there and keeps the air from flowing back out toward the uh, pump cup through this hole now if you've got some sort of uh, debris or uh, something on your the inside there, if you've got a nick or a gouge or something, why uh, that'll affect how well your uh, check valve seals. Or same thing, if you get something on here, uh, a nick or some sort of debris, that'll affect it. And what'll happen is uh, air can escape back out here. Uh, so uh, while you're pumping, you might have air pushing back out, uh, or it can leak out over, you know, gradually over a period of time, too. There's two O-rings on this when it's together. One is here in this groove, and what that does is you have it in the tube. It keeps the air from going around and getting past uh, the valve. It forces it then when you're compressing the air. To go, the only place the air can go is into the valve. And that's really what we're doing, is directing air here to where we want it to go. The other O-ring sits right in this, uh, this groove here at the base of this, so that when you put them together, uh, the air can't get out of the valve past these threads. If either of those leak, again, you can have a slow leak or you can have it so it won't build pressure uh, when you pump it up. The exhaust valve stem has a synthetic material here. I don't know if you can, maybe I can show you that. This is actually a synthetic material. 
on the inside of this cup. So that seats against the inside there, that kind of ring looking thing in the middle. And that'll keep the air from flowing out the front. Out through this hole. And this is a fairly uh, close fit. So what happens is when you, you pop this off the seat, the air can either come out here or it can come out here. Well, this is an easier way, and the air is kind of like water. It'll, it'll seek the easiest way to go, and it'll come up through the transfer port and out the, uh, out the barrel. Uh, the transfer port can be a problem if it leaks here between the, uh, the, the valve transfer port coming out here into the barrel. If it's, uh, if it's blowing out the sides, you're going to lose power. And uh, if you ever get a little blast of air in the face, it's most likely because uh, this seal here on the bolt, the O-ring, this one right here, is bad. And so it's not sealing within the breech properly. So you have to be uh, careful of that, too. And those are basically the, the areas that can cause you trouble with, the, uh, with this pistol.